Good evening, everyone. We are live here at Shaw TV, and this is Soul Work, and I'm your host, Jenny Cousins. And on tonight's show, we are opening up the phone lines for all of you to phone in. So if you don't phone in, we're coming knocking to your doors, Calgary. So just keep that in mind. And that number is 403-539-6710. So after our little commercial break, you make sure you pick up the phone and give myself and my guest a call. And on tonight's show, I want to welcome Tad Milmine to the show. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you're here. Well, thanks very much for having me back on. It's always a pleasure. Oh, I had to have you back on. There's, it, Tad has so much, so much going for him. <laughs> <laughs> In so many ways, so many ways. I, I tend to keep myself busy. There's no doubt about that. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know how you keep up with it all. It's just, wow. Yeah. Well, it's opportunities like this though, right? Where you get to share the message and and you never know who you might connect with or you, who, you, who you may reach. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's, it really is teamwork and I'm proud to say you're a part of that team. Aw, mm. aw, I'm, I'm mm. proud to be your friend. Yeah. Honored, oh, honored, very honored as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so can you tell our viewers what it was like for you growing up? Uh, for me, it was, you know, I, I, I guess I, I can say it was, it was quite painful and challenging. Um, you know, I used to be terribly shy. Obviously, times have changed a little yeah. bit now. But I used to be very, very, very shy. And the kids at school, they, they, they figured that out at a young age. And, and uh, you know, they, they would bully me, uh, bully me all, through, uh, all through school. And I tended just to hold everything in. But what the kids didn't know is that, you know, when I went home at the end of the day, I, I was going home to, to abuse and neglect and, and confined to a basement where, where I was confined to for 12 years. So... You know, it's, it's one of those things that I take those life lessons that I experienced growing up and how I felt. And even being a 43-year-old man now, I still remember all of that. I remember, uh, I remember it because I dream it every night. I still have those bad dreams oh. all the time. So it's, it's kind of like reliving it, except I know when I wake up, I'm safe mm -hmm. and it's okay. So, so yeah, I, I kind of have found a way to take all that negativity in the past and turn it into something positive and, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm here today. Yeah, as I've always called Tad, I've always called Tad an amazing, profound healer. Mm. I really have. Mm, thank you. Yeah, and I know a lot of healers, and you're very profound with what you're doing. Right. Definitely. Well, it's, it's you know, you and I were speaking earlier in that, uh, you know, when I created Bullying Ends here, I guess I'm in my fourth year now. I had no idea it was going to turn into something yeah. on such a grand scale and that I would have some of these, you know, incredible opportunities to meet some of society's most uh, amazing, mm -hmm. influential uh, people. But then on the flip side, also meeting, you know, everyday young people that are going to one day grow up to be mm -hmm. those influential uh, in individuals in society. So mm -hmm. I, I'm really in a, in a good space right now. You are. So what brought you in to be a Calgary police officer? Well, ever since I was, I was five years old, I, I remember I always wanted to grow up to be a police officer. It was just a, a dream of mine that, um, uh, you know, in, and I think that in a way got me through some of those challenges growing up. Uh, you know, when you're in a dark place and you're by yourself, as I spent so many years in that basement by myself, that you, you do have to find ways in your mind to occupy your time. And, and it would be the police officer, you know, what are they doing? And, and for me, the most intriguing part is, is how they're out there helping people. And so that was, was my dream as a little boy is I wanted to go mm -hmm. out to be a police officer because when I grow up, mm -hmm. I want to be able to help people. Mm -hmm. And that's something that just, it stuck with me and resonated for all those years to the point that when I was 32, that's when I finally yeah. started to believe in myself. I, I worked hard, I tried, and I achieved my goal. Mm, that's amazing. So why did you create Bullying Ends Here? Well, for Bullying Ends Here, it was, it was for two reasons. One is because of my own story that we've touched on a little bit already. And then the second part of that is, is it, it's, it was in October of 2011. I, had, I just finished my 14 hour day back when I was working with the RCMP in Surrey, BC. And I was just flipping through the news that night and I saw this headline. It said, Ottawa teenager takes his own life because of severe bullying. 
and I started reading about an incredible young man named Jamie Hubley, uh, a, a, a youth that I'd never had the opportunity to, uh, to have met, but knowing that I just had this immediate connection with his story, and, and I, I can't even really put in the words what it was, but there was something about reading about him that night that just truly changed my life. And mm. when I was finished reading you know, about the challenges he went through, about being relentlessly bullied, how he was targeted for being a figure skater, and then later in life for being openly gay, I, I just realized that there, there's a lot that I can do, and and although uh, you know Jamie is not with us, I wanted to carry his message forward. Mm -hmm. So I, I took my past, I, I took Jamie's story, I became very close with Jamie's family, uh, who still live in Ottawa to this day. And then that's when I decided that I was going to start getting out there and talking to young mm -hmm. people and sharing my story from the heart. No videos, no no audio visual in any way. Just just speaking from the heart and sharing what I went through yeah. to show youth that they're not alone. They've never mm -hmm. been alone. There are people all around that have felt that way, and we are all willing to help them. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, and and that's exactly what I mean with that healer in you. You know, talking to people out there, you've, right. you've obviously saved lives with people. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, you know, when I started this, my goal, my my intent was always to, to help just one person. That, that was, I just wanted to help just mm -hmm. one person. And as time has gone on, I've realized that the program has mm -hmm. grown so much because of word of mouth, where people are reaching out through the website, they're sharing their stories. La last year alone, I received over 15,000 emails, wow. and I, res I responded to all of them. Wow. And, and I think one of the key things that I need to make sure that I say is that I do all of this on my own time. So I have my full-time job of being a, a, you know, a police officer where I mm -hmm. patrol downtown Calgary, as I did until 8 o'clock this morning. And then, yeah. and then yeah. on my days off is, is when I kind of switch modes to the bullying ends here, and I do all my presentations, I do all the emails, mm -hmm. I, uh, I try keeping up with, with everything, but it's teamwork, and there's that's, a lot of people that help make that happen. That's amazing. Like that, That's amazing for you to put your energy and time mm -hmm. into that. And, yeah. I, and I wanted to bring up your book just, oh, yes. just before I forget. And I mean, the, your book here, what made you write your book? It's well, phenomenal. The, the reason why I wrote the book is because when I speak to audiences, I only have an hour, you know, because that's kind of, as human beings, we, we tend to get uncomfortable sitting on the floor in chairs or we need a break and that. So I thought, I'm going to do this all in one hour, talk as fast as I can, get it all out. But of course, I'm speaking about 43 years of experience yeah. in one hour. I'm missing a lot. I, I, I'm not filling in the gaps. I'm not explaining as much detail. And I thought I wanted to share a little bit more of my journey and, and what mm -hmm. I've been through and some of the people I've, I've got to meet and how this really happened, how one person really can make a yeah. difference in this world. Definitely, because I know y your other book that um, I had read, I mean, it takes me a little while to read a book. I yeah. read your book just in one sitting and one night. Wow. That's how much I really, really like, wow, like, wow. Right. Well, really thank you for that, me. because it's, uh, you know, I'm the first to say, it was one of the most difficult things I, I did for twofold, because one, writing about your own life is is challenging because it's opening up you know it, it's opening up um new memories maybe yeah. some that you weren't really wanting to come back but then on the flip side when you go to edit your book every time you read it it again triggers even more memories so you're yeah. like oh i need to expand i need to put more so my yeah. book is getting thicker every time i go back to <laughs> to rewrite or to edit it so what made you think of the pink shirt i love that color on you well, as we know that, that uh, you know, in February there, we have Pink Shirt Day and, and then in April we have the International Day of Pink and, and it seems like every time around, around that time of year is I always get asked, you know, why is Pink Shirt Day or International mm -hmm. Day of Pink important to me? And, and, uh, and I just started thinking that why, why am I wearing pink only the one day when in fact the whole point of that mm -hmm. day is to get a conversation going for another 364 days. I thought, so, you know, I'm going to wear the pink shirt every single day. And uh, because that, that's exactly what we do is, is we keep yeah. the conversation going. So I'm going to keep yeah. wearing the pink yeah, every single day as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let's say if somebody comes up to you and they said, um, you know, I think I'm getting bullied or right. I know a friend who's getting bullied. Mm -hmm. What would yeah. you suggest to them to do and how to handle it? Well, the, the, the very first thing I'm always going to say is, is after they finish speaking, because the first step is always listening. That's the most important step. Uh, but then it's going to be asking them, how is it 
that I might be able to help. And if, mm -hmm. if they are looking for advice or direction, you know, the, the most important part is going to be the communication, mm -hmm. reaching out to the trusted adults, reaching out to those that, uh, if nothing else, that we can just vent and release some of that, that tension and, and stress that, that we are building up. And it's not an age thing. You know, even young people get that as well. Mm -hmm. And and then it's, it's, it's going to be that communication that's going to lead to whatever step is going to be best. Because yeah. every... Every incident of bullying is going to be different from the next. There, there's no yeah. black and white resolution to this. It's, it's, we need to listen to find out what's going on and then start building, building the path to, to rectifying it. Wow. That, that, yeah, because I, I know I've, I've seen certain bullying and I'm like, that's yeah. just sad. It how, is. It yeah. is. And it's everywhere, yeah. young and, yeah. and adults as well. So how could we help you move forward? With well, it? for me, as far as the program's concerned, I mean, there, there's really... But it's it's all word of mouth. It's it's sharing on social media, sharing the program. You know, I just created a commercial, a three minute you know commercial that that's out on on YouTube, and it's on on the website bullyingnsear.ca. And and second most is is probably the biggest obstacle that we're facing right now is because of the word of mouth. There's so many requests from all around the world. And it's not a problem in a, uh, to, to execute it. It's, it's the financial side of things, you know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we know, especially with Alberta's economy, you know, things are, are tight. And, um, but I think with Bullying Ends Here, we've proven that we, are, we really are changing and saving lives. And mm -hmm. the importance of, of everyone has a role to play in. And granted, mm -hmm. not everyone can go out and do a presentation in school exactly. or, or respond to emails. But, but if, if we're in a financial position mm -hmm. to make a, a little assistance, yeah. it goes a long way for us. It does. Mm -hmm. It does indeed. So if somebody wanted to make a um, donation or get in hold of you, what's the best way for them to do that? It would be through the website, bullyingnsear.ca. Okay. Right on the homepage, there's there's the donate button and all the information to learn more about myself and the program that I've, mm -hmm. I've created. But also, you know, we are a registered charity and I think it's, it's most important to know that every single cent goes directly to reaching youth. Nobody mm, yeah. in this team gets paid. Yeah. I don't get paid. I yeah. don't want any money from yeah. my story, yeah. even even the sale of the book. Every yeah. dollar goes to the Towards charity. It. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm I'm rewarded yeah. handsomely with with having these opportunities, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, that is amazing. So Calgary, we're just going to go on a short commercial break here. So I want you to give Tad a call, Calgary, <laughs> and myself too. <laughs> and that number is 403-539-6710. We're going to be right back after this short commercial break, so hang in there.